So we have a pretty good number of people on the webinar now, so I think we can get started. Um, my name is Rose. I'm a community and partner engineer in Circle CI, and we have Brady and Daniel from Anchor to do a webinar about the orb that they created. Um, and I'll just start with a really brief intro to Circle and to orbs, and then they will go ahead and talk about their orb and demonstrate it. Um, and as we're talking, uh, you can submit questions using the Q&A feature. Um, probably we will hold most questions until the end, but if something comes up that's super relevant to what's being talked about, uh, we might be able to answer it for you right away. Um, so Circle CI is uh, obviously a continuous integration, continuous deployment, delivery platform. Uh, it was founded in 2011. We have more than 180 employees. A lot of developers are using us. Um, and we're hiring. Uh, you can go to the next slide. So if you're in this webinar, you probably already know something about orbs. Basically, this is a way for you to share and reuse um, snippets of Circle CI configuration and kind of extend the platform to more easily use uh, all kinds of third party services, basically anything that you can imagine. You can go to the next slide. Um, so here's just a really simple example um, demonstrating some of the most basic components of an orb. So you have uh, definable commands, definable executors, and definable jobs. So if you use CircleCI, you probably know what most of these things are in the context of a regular CircleCI config. And orbs really just kind of let you define them yourself instead of just using the ones that CircleCI provides by default. Um, so this one, you can probably just read the code to see what it's doing. Um, it just has a command that says hello, and then you get to choose who it's saying hello to. Um, and you get to choose um, how the command runs and things like that. So you can go to the next slide. Um, so this is just a list of some of our current technology partners who have authored orbs, um, including Anchor, a bunch of other big names there as well. And uh, I'll have some details at the end about how uh, you can join the technology partner program and contribute partner orbs to our platform. You can go to the next slide. So I will let Daniel take over now and talk about Anchor and get into the orb that they created. All right, thank you, Rose. Uh, this is Dan Nermi. I'm the CTO co-founder of Anchor. And um, we're really happy to be here talking about uh, Anchor container image scanning and uh, and the work that uh, we've done in, in uh, collaboration with Circle CI, uh, in particular using the new interfaces of Orbs to add some container image scanning uh, very quickly and easily to your CI CD. So uh, today uh, I'm going to be talking a little bit about some high level concepts that, that really describe <clears throat> exactly where the, the Anchor uh, functionality and some of our technology fits. And I thought I'd start with a, a quick overview um, of you know, all of the different places where container image scanning can happen, right? Uh, so security is a pretty broad term. Compliance is another broad term. Uh, best practices, conformance, that kind of thing. And so uh, I'd really like to, to focus in today and uh, the stuff that we're gonna be showing is, is really targeting a specific area here, um, which is really around the build and automated CI CD aspect of a container lifecycle. So when we look uh, at, at that part of the, the, the life cycle, you've got you know, developers making source code, you've got deployment and runtime on either side, but in the middle with containers specifically, there's an awful lot that can be done to take a container image and actually figure out what's going on inside of this container image. What is it made of? Where did it come from? Uh, does it have any problems in it, either from a security perspective or just a site-specific, organization-specific best practices checks, perhaps some compliance stuff? Uh, there's a lot that can be gleaned at that moment in time when the container image is built but is not yet executed where we can figure out, you know, something's not quite right, we should stop it now before it moves on in the process. And the ideal location to do that is, is right in the CI CD. So we're talking about build artifacts, we're talking about software packages and dependencies of those packages that exist in the container. We're talking about configuration checking. We're talking about any kind of best practices. Make sure that certain things that your organization might find important are actually present before that container image moves on. And being able to do that in the CI CD will you know, basically you know, add that kind of check as almost a functional test to say, 
this software has been built. It's, it complies. It's secure as far as we can tell at this moment in time. It's ready to move off. So when we talk about container image scanning technologies, um, which is uh, really where, where Anchor is, uh, is focused, at a high level, there's th these types of tools and services really should do a number of, of things. Um, you know, first, minimally, they need to be able to take as input a built container image. This is the final artifact that could potentially execute in your container runtime system. They need to analyze and inspect the contents of the actual image. So not the surrounding metadata necessarily, but whatever is actually inside of this container image you need to be able to figure out what's there. Um, they absolutely need to be able to perform various types of checks. They can be security checks, best practices checks, compliance checks against CIS or NIST compliance things. There's all sorts of stuff uh, that need to be checked and in these platforms, this technology needs to be able to do that. And finally, and, and sort of importantly, um, there's various types of outputs that these technologies need to, to generate. Um, one is a report, right? A static report. This is what happened. So you can take that report, look at it, you know, learn or, you know, as a human being, take a look or store that report in a document store so that you have an audit trail. So there's definitely a need to generate this kind of information. This is what happened. Um, there's another type of output, which is a notification, right? Something extreme might be going on. Uh, you know, a new CV has come out that's really important and all of your images coming through the CI CD might be susceptible. Uh, that notification event is something that these technologies uh, should be able to emit. Um, and finally, and this is one that we put a lot of attention into and is very specific to CI CD use case uh, is, is these, these technologies really should inform a control decision. Like whether or not an image is good or bad, uh, according to some specification, uh, is, is something that needs to be able to be communicated by the technology so that the surrounding CI CD can say, okay, it's, you know, I can pass or fail at this moment in time and then either move on or go back and, and uh, you know, uh, review the reports and, and do all that stuff. There's some tools that exist to do this. Uh, today we're going to be talking about our open source uh, product called Anchor Engine. Uh, which is a, a tool that's custom built uh, to actually perform all of these things and more. Um, and it has some, some uh, properties that make it very uh, you know, unique when it comes to container image scanning. Uh, first is that the technology that we have, the way it deploys, um, pretty much everything about it is container native. When we sat down to build this tech, we decided to build it all on, you know, on the, the principles of containers. It itself distributes as a container. That's how you consume it and get it up and running. Um, and it also takes container images as input. The Anchor Engine open source, uh, something available today, it runs as a service. It's got a really broad API that can be accessed either directly, it's a RESTful API, um, or we have a simple CLI tool that can interact with the, the service uh, itself. So there's a number of different ways to interact and, and actually ask it to do scans and do evaluations and do security checks, all sorts of stuff. It's a granular API, so they're all pretty short uh, uh, requests and they, they generate generally JSON uh, documents as a response. Um, Anchor Engine itself is a distributed system. So you can get the Anchor Engine service as a single container, bring it up and it comes up with an API and you can start using it immediately. But if you look into that container, you'll actually see the Anchor Engine service is built out of a number of uh, uh, different interacting services internally. And what this means is with that same container, you can, you can run the service as a single instance of a container or you can actually build it out to scale horizontally with a number of different core services, a number of different worker services to get more throughput, higher performance and high availability. Um, it has those principles built into it. And most importantly, it's got a powerful and customizable policy-based checking uh, engine that we call the policy engine. And that takes customizable policy documents that you, the user, can create to say, this is exactly what it is we want to check in our CI CD against all container images coming through the system uh, to make sure that they comply, they're secure, and everything before they move on. Okay, so there's a couple of concepts here. And this, this concept uh, you know, list of, of information sort of walks through the actual process that the Anchor Engine technology performs uh, behind the scenes. Uh, when things happen, and um, th this sort of gives uh, everyone a sense of sort of how this technology works. So essentially, the first thing that happens, the, the Anchor engine is up and running with its API as a service. Um, and uh, one of the API calls is add an image to, to Anchor engine. 
And what happens at that point, point in time is that we, we perform an image analysis. So we take that image, download it, unpack it internally, and figure out exactly what's in the, inside of that container. This is a deep categorization analysis that we do. We figure out you know, what operating system it's based on, or maybe it's not based on any operating system. We figure out if it's got uh, OS packages installed, Debian's and RPM's and Alpine packages. We figure out if it's got language packages like NPM's and GEM's and uh, Java jars and Python packages. We go all the way down to the file level and do checksums of all the files. And some of our analyzers actually look inside of files and look for stuff. But this is a, a relatively heavyweight operation and it's unopinionated in Anchor Engine. So we just do the analysis. At this point in time, we're actually not doing any scanning or policy checks. We're just figuring out what's inside of the container image. And then we store that um, information alongside the digest of the container, which is a unique identifier against the content of the container image. The next thing that's happening, and this is happening actually all the time, you know, uh, alongside image analyses and things like that, is that the Anchor Engine is pulling in data feeds from a variety of different external sources. And this is stuff like NVD um, uh, security vulnerability data from, uh, from MITRE. We pull in RHSAs from Red Hat. We pull in uh, Oracle uh, vulnerability, Ubuntu, Canonical, Debian, Alpine, a number of different data sources. They're all getting pulled in to the Anchor Engine um, uh, service. Uh, all the time. And so it's pulling in deltas uh, against vulnerabilities we already have, and it's pulling in new feeds as we add new, uh, new data sources uh, that, are, that are available to, to everybody's Anchor Engine. With the combination of those two pieces of information, now we've got image analyses, we've got external data like vulnerability data. This is where now uh, when the CICD or, or user through the API calls a policy evaluation, um, uh, uh, the, the policy engine of Anchor uh, will, will execute and perform a series of checks. Does this container image have vulnerabilities? Does it have secrets that are in place? Does it have X, Y, Z? And these are all configurable checks that you can write down as a policy document and then perform an evaluation at any time. Uh, the other thing that can happen is a specific security scan. So at any point in time, you can query the Anchor engine for information about the, the container image whether it's its contents or the current set of vulnerabilities that have been found, all sorts of stuff can get generated at any point in time as well. And finally, the Anchor Engine has the capability of actually emitting notifications uh, in addition to this interactive request. Did it pass fail? Yes, no. It can also perform these operations automatically and generate notifications. So uh, a little bit about some of our policy checks. Um, our policy language is pretty flexible um, and importantly allows you again to write down you know, a very simple policy that can say, if there's a security vulnerability that's known, generate a stop, like fail, um, all the way through to a very fine grained policy check that can say, uh, if the severity is low, but it has a fix, then do a fail. But if it's low and doesn't have a fix, maybe you want to just do a warn. You know, so there's a lot of tuning that can be done. Uh, but there's, a, there's also a number of different checks. Some of them are security, and we do a, a lot of those, but we have other types of checks as well. So, um, you know, on the image side, you can check for, you know, are certain operating system packages present? You can whitelist or blacklist um, at a very fine grain, like this operating system package aim version, um, add a bunch of uh, different type of parameters there in the checks. We also have support for third party packages. Um, these are more language package oriented, like NPMs and GEMs, Java, Python packages. You can blacklist, whitelist those things. There's file names and contents. You can write down custom regular expressions to search for inside of files and, and put a check in place to see if you find this, then a generate a stop or fail or a warning. Um, and there's importantly build metadata checks against the Docker file. So if we have that, that build uh, you know, description of the Docker file against a container image, you can put in a check for any Docker file uh, command uh, and value that you want to search for to make sure that that conforms. On the security check side, we've got software vulnerabilities for both OS packages and language specific packages. We've got a secrets and keys check. So, um, you know, we hear stories from, from customers and users about folks that might accidentally leave an Amazon key or some, you know, SSH credential uh, inside uh, a known location or even an unknown location inside the container image, just accidentally. We can do checks for that. 
And finally, some of the metadata checks are, are more security focused. We can make sure that you know, the, the container image is not running as a, the effective user root. Uh, we can check to see if ex uh, certain exposed ports that you define are, are not present. We can check to make sure that there's a, there's a health check directive in the Docker file. And really importantly, again, these are all super customizable, ranging from you know, a really lightweight vulnerability scan all the way through to a full-on compliance best practices and security check that can all be performed in one shot in the same board. All right, and finally, um, here's kind of how that all fits into a, a typical CI CD workflow. Um, the user side, we've got developers generating code, that code's getting put you know, into a repository that then gets picked up by CI CD. Um, so Circle CI will pick that up and initiate a build that ultimately results in a container image. On the side, we've got an ops and security user uh, which can generate these uh, Anchor policy documents and again, write down, this is what it means to be secure. This is what it means for our best practice to comply, all that stuff. Um, those two things happen you know, um, uh, on the side. Once the policy is in place, the developers have code coming through. The, the, the build can call out to Anchor and say, analyze this image, perform the policy checks against the policy that the ops and security team has put in place. That, um, that evaluation will actually generate a pass-fail and a bunch of information, a report that's got all of this information in it about exactly what happened. And if it fails, it can go back and you know, specify exactly why it fails, and in some cases actually recommend some remediation. And if it passes, then it can, it can move on uh, to automate the testing. This is pretty flexible. It can go you know, pretty much anywhere in this general space, but in, you know, in, in general, this is, this is the use case that we see happening a lot. And so with that, um, I'm going to pass it over to Brady, who's actually going to show you a demonstration of how this works and talk a little bit more about how orbs have helped us to achieve this reusable notion uh, within CircleCI. Uh, hi, I'm Brady Todd Hunter. I'm the DevOps engineer at Anchor. Um, I've been working with CircleCI pretty heavily for the last couple months, um, implementing CircleCI into all of our workflows. Uh, we actually use CircleCI in-house, so we're pretty experienced with it. Um, as well as writing this orb for making Anchor Engine easily consumable um, by our users. Uh, so first I wanna talk about the different ways that Anchor Engine can be run. Um, and a lot of the stuff Dan was talking about is mostly utilized in like a, a stateful fashion for Anchor Engine. So in this case, this is usually when Anchor Engine is installed and self-hosted um, like on-prem or on the cloud. And when you're running Anchor Engine in this fashion, it has to be uh, network accessible from your CI CD system. Um, when you're running Anchor Engine in a stateful fashion, all your analysis data and your vulnerability data is stored in a Postgres database, which is hosted alongside Anchor Engine. Um, this allows image repo subscriptions, so you can subscribe to a repo and have Anchor Engine check it for updates and run scans automatically. Um, and this also is what allows custom notifications uh, when important events happen with Anchor Engine. Um, the stateful Anchor Engine is, is how the open source system is kind of intended to work, and that's we also have an enterprise offering for stateful Anchor Engine. Um, however, for this demonstration, for CircleCI orbs, we actually run Anchor Engine in a stateless fashion. So when Anchor Engine is run statelessly, <clears throat> it is run essentially in your CI runner, the container is started up for every single job, performs the image analysis, and then is stopped. Um, so no data is persisted uh, from your scans. Uh, what this allows us to do is make things really simple and seamless inside of your CI system. Uh, in the case of stateless Anchor Engine, we still store the results that are created when scans are done. Um, they are stored as artifacts within your CI system, so you can still go back and look at the results of your scan. Um, the one thing that we do with stateless Anchor Engine is we have a Anchor maintained Postgres container that's preloaded with all of our vulnerability data. Um, what, this let, what this lets us do is stand up Anchor Engine fairly quickly with all of that feed data already synced up um, so that you can access it right away. Uh, that vulnerability data is updated daily using a scheduled Circle CI job. Um, I put a link to that job in here just for anybody who's interested so they can see that how that feed data is generated and kind of see what we're doing with this container. 
Um, another thing that's really interesting about this job is I'm using um, commands which were introduced with Circle CI version 2.1, and it's kind of like a principal um, mechanism for orbs. So if you wanted to check that out, you could see like how commands can be implemented. Um, if we have time later, I might go check this out, but uh, for now, you can just look at that on your own if you'd like. So a stateless uh, Anchor Engine is specifically meant to be used within your CI CD pipeline, like I said. Um, <clears throat> So you can plug it right into your CI CD and ensure that every image that you build is up to your organization's security standards. Um, so you can either uh, just generate reports and store them as artifacts in your CI for your security team to look at later or for auditing your builds. Um, or even better, you can create custom policies like Dan was talking about and do custom policy evaluation gating on your jobs um, within your Docker image build pipeline and make sure that no non-compliant Docker images are ever pushed to production. Um, that I think is the most powerful thing that can be done um, with stateless Anchor Engine. Uh, what's really great about this, I kind of already mentioned it, but there's no additional service man server management required. So this makes it really um, easy. Uh, you don't, you just set up the orb and that's it. You don't have to think about any pet servers. And I think DevOps people will really appreciate that. Um, it's, it's immutable, it's, uh, ephemeral. Um, like Dan said, it's container native. So the engine stood up in a container and then it's tore right back down when the job is done. Um, so the CircleCI orb that we've created is a perfect example of Anchor Engine running in a stateless fashion. Um, so on that note, I uh, just wanna start talking about the orb a little. Um, you can go check out the orb at the Circle CI orb registry. Um, we are a partner orb. I'm not going to get into actually poking through this, the source code of this because uh, I don't think we have time. But you can go look at it. Um, and this source code is also available on a public repository if you ever wanted to put in any issues or make contributions yourself. Uh, the Circle CI orb is running on the latest Anchor Engine version 0 0.3 release, which was just released a couple weeks ago. Um, and we made sure the orb was updated right when we updated Anchor Engine. So we will continue doing that as we add more functionality to Anchor Engine that will be added to the Circle CI orb. Um, the orb includes the following functions that can be utilized in your build. There is the Anchor Engine executor, which is based on the Circle CI 08 2018 machine image. Um, and it just basically has all of the Anchor Engine environment variables preset. Uh, if you're looking at that executor, you can see that we set the Anchor CLI password, which might seem sketchy that we have a hard-coded password, but this is ephemeral. We also have a parameter so that if that does make you uncomfortable, you can pass in your own um, password for the Anchor Engine CLI um, using a Circle CI environment variable. Um, so then we also have the scan image job. So this is a job that can just be added to a workflow. I would say this is like the easiest way to use the orb. Um, you can just plug this job into a workflow, pass it an image name that that's, uh, already lives in a repository that's tagged, and it will just run a scan on that image. Um, this job works for public and private repositories, and we'll get into how to do that in a little bit. And then the other functionality of the orb is the scan local image command. So this command can actually be used within your image build jobs to scan an image right after it's built and use that scan to gate your push to your registry um, based on a policy evaluation with your custom policies. So the thing that I really love about Circle CI orbs, and I really do love the orbs, I'm not just saying it because we're doing a webinar for this like orbs are really great um, and the coolest thing about it here is to use anchor engine with the orb all it takes is this eight lines of yaml super easy this does everything you need right here like if all you wanted to do is scan an image you could just do that put something like this into your circle ci config and get image scanning um, to compare that to manually doing this this is kind of what it would look like on the right side to, to do the same exact thing. Um, it's like 33 lines of YAML. It's still not crazy, but if you think about repeating this, every single time you wanna scan another image, with the orb on the left side, you just add two more lines. 
and you're scanning another image. If you're doing it manually, you have to add all of these lines for every single image you scan. Um, it's pretty easy to see how like out of control <laughs> that can get and how hard that can become to manage. So that right there just is amazing to me. Um, so the first thing I want to talk about in our orb is our image scan job. This is kind of the most basic way of utilizing the orb. Um, this can be used to scan an image that's already been tagged and pushed to a registry. Um, one of the ways that I could would suggest maybe using this job is, well, there's kind of two ways. One way it could be just to get reports on images. Um, maybe you don't care about doing policy evaluations. You don't care about gating or pushing. You just want image or reports to be stored with your CI. So you could use this job to do that. Um, and then another suggestion here is what you could do is you could build an image and push it to a staging repository so that you have some sort of build artifact. And then before that artifact is pushed or promoted to production, you could run it through the scan image job to um, decide if it's, if it's compliant and ready to go to production. Um, this scan image job could be used with public and private repositories. Um, for a public repository, all you have to do is add the image name like the example I just showed. Uh, for private repositories, you need to add the name and then add the parameter private registry true. Um, and then make sure that you set your Docker user and Docker pass environment variables within the Circle CI console. So on that note, I'll just do a show you a quick demo of the image scan running. Um, and I'm also going to kick off a few other demos because they take a little bit to run. And I just want to make sure that it all happens. So I'm just adding a dot to my readme um, and then pushing it up to the to the repository so that the circle CI jobs get started. Forgive me while I do this. It's kind of boring to watch. <laughs> um, so I just updated the readme. We'll go into what's actually happening here in a second. I just wanted to get these jobs kicked off because they do take a few minutes. Um, so the very first example we have here is the Circle CI image scan, which I broke. Awesome. Um, so what I just totally overwrote this, uh, my, my uh, Circle CI badge. So dang it. Um, live demos. This is why we don't do live demos. So let me not click my badge that I made all nice and easy for you guys to get to <laughs> and go into my Circle CI console. Um, so you guys can all see these. These are all available. I will update these readmes after this webinar. I'm not going to try to do it now um, so that you can just go click the badge and see these jobs running. Um, so for the first job, you can see the anchor image scan right here is is running and it's scanning. Um, this is going to be scanning the Anchor Engine uh, Docker image. So there's not really a lot to show here, especially while it's running. It's going to install the Anchor Engine tools, which is just a wrapper script that we use that does a lot of basic stuff for CI. Um, then it's going to start up Anchor Engine. One thing I want to point out is that starting of Anchor Engine is a little bit slow right now, and we're working on speeding that up. Um, so right now it takes a couple minutes, two to three minutes for the engine to start, and then a few minutes for the scans to happen. We're actually working on a push right now to make that faster. Um, I'd like to see it happen in less than a minute. It'd be really cool if we can make it happen in like tens of seconds. Um, I think that's really important. Um, so expect to see that in a future release. Um, and so I'm not just going to sit here and watch these go, uh, but what we can do is just look at what this, this file looks like. So once again, it's just really basic. We're running the, the Circle CI or job um, anchor image scan. And uh, what I'm doing here is I'm scanning the anchor engine latest. I pass the timeout parameter just because this image takes a little bit long to run. So we bump that up from the default of 300 seconds to 500 seconds. 
um, that is totally configurable. So if your images are bigger and take longer, you can adjust that. And then the second job here is scanning a private uh, repo. So this is just a private repo on my personal Docker Hub. Um, and so you can see I just put private registry to true. And then inside my uh, Circle CI console, I have my Docker user and Docker pass set for pulling that private registry. Um, that can be done just through your Circle CI console. If you go into the settings and go to environment variables, you can add a variable and you know add your Docker user um, and Docker pass. And the anchor orb will just pull those environment variables automatically. Um, you are also free to use different um, environment variables if you'd like, and those can be set as parameters in the orb. Um, that's totally up to you. So um, while those run, I'm gonna just move on and we'll kind of go over what the results look like when, once those finish. Um, but that basic scan is really simple, um, just creates reports essentially. Um, so the second functionality you can use with the Anchor Engine Orb is the local image scan command. So this command is intended to be used within your image build job, like so within the pipeline. Um, and it can actually take an image that was just built and scan it without pushing it to a registry first. So what's really nice about this is, like I said, you can put it right within your image build pipeline and you can use it to gate the push to your registry so that no artifact ever even gets put into a registry if it doesn't pass your image scanning. Um, so in that pipeline, after the image is built, you take it and you pass it to the anchor orb. And what the orb does is it takes that image and it pushes it to an ephemeral Docker registry. So right now, um, Anchor Engine is only able to pull images directly from a registry. So to get around that, we just, in the orb, we stand up a Docker registry using the official registry container, and we just push the image to that temporarily. Um, nothing's persisted. That registry is tore down at the end of the job. Um, just like Anchor Engine is, uh, it's just needed to be to for Anchor's functionality essentially. Um, then Anchor Engine will pull that image and perform analysis on that image, and then results of that analysis will be stored as artifacts. This works just like the image scan job. Um, the local image scan command is best to be used with a custom policy to prevent your non-compliant images from getting pushed to your registry, but it doesn't have to be. Um, you can just use the default policy if you want to. And once again, just create reports that sit right in your CI um, artifacts. Uh, so this gives an example of the local image scan command. Um, in this command, I, or in this example, I'm showing an entire um, Docker image build pipeline. Um, and the way that I'm doing it here is just to demonstrate one way of doing um, a Docker image build pipeline. And in that we're doing two jobs. We're doing one job for building out the image and that job is using um, the Docker stable container um, and CircleCI's remote Docker. And it's building that image and then saving that image to a tarball and then persisting that image to the workspace. And the reason why that is really powerful is you can take that workspace now and pass it to other jobs. So you can have those jobs perform actions on that container in parallel. Um, so for example, you could have take that tarball, pass it to the local image scan job here and have anchor engine scan that image. At the same time, you could have some other tests running on that same image in parallel so that those things are happening at the same time. Um, and then you could just have your push gated by Anchor Engine scan passing um, as well as your tests, right? <clears throat> so that's just another example of how to do a, a pipeline. That's how we do it uh, at Anchor. And you can see right down here that the scan image job is requires the build image job. So that's basically just saying I require the artifact that's persisted to the workspace from the build image job. So demo of this, we'll see where it's at. Um, here's, the, here's the repo for that local image scan. And this is what my readme was supposed to look like before I overwrote it. <laughs> so a nice little badge here uh, that can be clicked on. 
to look at the jobs that are actually running. Um, I think that this job might be queued. I'm not sure why it's not running. Yeah, it's queued, um, of course. So the one I wanna show is queued, bummer. <laughs> um, so here is um, another example that I ran earlier of that local image job. So first we have the build that runs in just 48 seconds. It's pretty simple, just builds a container and then persists it to the workspace. And then in the second job, we have the scan image, which takes the artifact from the workspace and passes that to Anchor Engine. So I just kind of wanted to go over the steps that are happening here. So first we attach the workspace, which has the image on it. Um, then we, we do a Docker load to load that cache. We install our Anchor tool script, which like I said, is just a wrapper script for performing actions with Anchor Engine. Um, then we start up Anchor Engine. Um, like I said, it takes a couple minutes for that to start. Uh, then we start up our registry. So I wanted to show you this um, just to, to alleviate any fears of maybe persisting your images in a way you don't want persisted. This just shows that we're just standing at the registry latest container um, with Docker Compose within this machine image and tagging your image with that name and passing it to the registry. Um, so really pretty straightforward. This is gonna go away. When this job is done, this registry is gone. So nothing's persisted. Um, then Anchor Engine will pull that image and perform a scan. You, you can see the status of that as it's running. Um, in this case, that scan only took two minutes, pretty fast. Um, and then it generated a bunch of reports for you, which were saved as artifacts. Uh, one other interesting thing here is you can see that whether you s decide to gate your stuff, gate your jobs with policy evaluations, a policy evaluation will still happen. And you can still see how your image fared against that policy evaluation. So in this case, it used the default policy evaluation. This image actually failed. Um, the default policy evaluation, which Anchor would recommend that CI should stop, but we didn't have our CI set up to be gated on that policy analysis, so it just kept going. Um, but you can see that the reason it was stopped right over here in status is that there was a high vulnerability found in an OS package. Um, so that's just good information to, to know about your image, right? Um, so then finally, you can take a look at what was found in that image. And this is just a job that I threw together that's taking your JSON reports and just parsing them with JQ um, and printing it to the screen. So it's nothing fancy. Uh, you, you can do this however you like. You can make reports however you like using JQ. That's the, the beauty of receiving your reports in JSON format. Um, but I just did this to kind of save you a step if you wanted to just see. So these will be in your Circle CI console and available to anybody who has access to your console. Um, so you can see you have the every package installed in the image as well as their version. And in, in addition to all of the different CVEs that were found, so the package and the package version and then what CVEs were found that are associated to those packages. So that's really, really valuable information um, to be used. I keep doing and going to the wrong thing. Okay, so that's kind of it for the CircleCI local scan um, demo. So moving on, what you can do with that is rather than just creating these, these um, reports and saving them into your Circle CI, you can actually create custom policies, which we've talked about over and over and over again. And you can apply these custom policies to your CI pipeline to gate your pushes. So one of the things we kind of envision with this, with using these custom policies is that your ops or your DevOps or your security team can create a custom anchor policy bundle which can be included in all your projects. Um, so what they can do is from a top level, you can enforce policies, you can automatically enforce policies that are defined by the organization rather than each individual person. Um, I think that's really powerful and um, makes it really easy for all of the teams to work together and um, you know, be more DevOpsy, right? Um, so, What's really cool about this is this let, lets developers customize their Docker files however they want um, for whatever their application needs. And they don't have to worry about misconfigurations getting into prod because they know 
that um, they know that ops or security team has created this policy that will stop their image from being pushed to prod if it's not compliant. So that lets developers move quickly, but not recklessly. And I think that's really important. Um, I think that empowers developers to do what they need to do to make the best software they can as fast as they can. Um, this policy enforcement just enables automa automated security compliance in your CI to CD pipeline. I mean, I think that that's a given that everybody wants that. Um, there's nothing better than having your security compliance just happen. Um, no thought needed, right? <clears throat> so this just shows an example of a custom Anchor policy bundle. Uh, this is just a snippet of a bundle that we use in the demo. Um, and you can kind of just see what that looks like. It's JSON. Um, we have documentation that goes over the whole process of creating custom policies. So you can use this as kind of a stepping stone and then go look at our documentation to create your own policy as needed. Um, so this one is going to stop. It's going to stop and fail the job if any OS packages are found that have a severity that's greater than or equal to medium with the fix available. Um, another policy here is if the effective user in your Docker file is root, it will stop and um, fail the policy evaluation. So these custom policy bundles can be placed in your repo at uh, .circleci .ancor slash policybundle.json. Um, and if you put that file into your repo, any job that uses an anchor orb or a command that uses the orb will evaluate against that bundle. Um, if for some reason you want to evaluate against multiple policy bundles in your repo, you can set the policy bundle file path parameter on that specific job to point to a different path for a bundle if you want to. Um, for example, if let's say you had I don't know, four different policies you wanted to run on an image, you could put all four of those policies in your repo and then specify them in each specific job to that, to scan that image um, with the policy bundle file path. Uh, and then finally, your job can be marked as fail, like in Circle CI, it can be marked as failed uh, upon a policy evaluation status of fail if you set the parameter policy failure equals true. So I'll show you that in the demo here um, coming up. So here's just the, a really basic example of another Docker build or image build pipeline. Um, this one I'm doing a little bit differently than the last one. I'm running the build inside the same job as the container scan. Um, I'm just doing that for simplicity. It makes this code snippet shorter. Um, so you can see we're running it inside the Anchor Engine Executor. So this is inside the Circle CI machine image. Um, we're checking out the code. We are building that container with Docker build, and then we are passing it to the analyze local image job. And you can see right here, we have policy failure set to true. So if this job, if this scan, if the policy evaluation of the scan fails, this next step is not gonna run. This, this push container step won't run because the job will be marked as failed. So that's an example of adding gating to your build pipeline. Um, so let's go take a look at that, see if it's done. Um, so here's this job, once again, with my broken README. <laughs> let's just go to that uh, in the Circle CI console. So you can see we have two jobs here. We have the custom policy pass and the custom policy fail jobs. Uh, so let's take a look at this fail job first. So this was intended to fail. Um, in this job, we were using a policy evaluation that had some rules set into it that this Docker image was not compliant to. So um, I'm not going to go into this whole process, but you can see the image was, was analyzed. And then during the evaluate image against desired policy bundle step, it failed. Um, so you can see here that Anchor says the status is fail, it recommends stopping, and you can see a list of all of the reasons why that job failed. So in this case, we have a bunch of medium and high vulnerability packages, which Anchor says we should stop for. Um, we have the root user is specified in the Docker file. 
um, the Docker file exposes port 22, there's no health check, and it found some AWS keys. Um, you can see it even points directly to where those keys are. Um, so let's just take a quick look at that Docker file and see like why, like what was it? What were these simple things that happened that caused it to fail this policy and evaluation? Um, so right here, we can look at this doc, the Docker file, uh, and we can see that when apt get update was run, there was no app get upgrade that was run. So the package index was updated, but the packages themselves weren't updated on that system. So those vulnerabilities are still there, um, like Anchor Engine showed. This is a really easy thing to accidentally make, have happen um, in your Docker file. Uh, another example here is the health check was commented out because developers don't care about health checks when they're breaking things, right? <laughs> like sometimes you need to stop a health check or comment it out. Uh, so that happened here. You can also see port 22 was exposed, um, which can be used for debugging. Look, there's even a note up here that says to not let those things get through, but problems happen, right? And then also there's no user specified in this Docker file. So it's just gonna run as root. Um, so that demonstrates why this failed. Oh, and then finally, the last thing is we can see here, we have our AWS credentials. Um, oh no. <laughs> we don't want that, right? Um, so to see that same job, but passing, we have, let's see, policy eval, and here's the passing job. We can see that this evaluate, evaluate uh, policy bundle step finished, and you can see that it passed this time. Um, this is the exact same policy bundle that the failed one ran against. It's just that it was running with this other Docker file um, over here, node critical pass, that had our apt get update as well as apt get upgrade. It has our health check uncommented. It has port 22 removed. It has user node specified. And then if you look right here, you can see the AWS credentials were deleted. Um, so Pretty awesome. Um, like those are really things that are really easy to slip by and Anchor makes sure that that doesn't happen and automates that for you. So if you continue on, you can see this passed and um, our report was printed and then the push container step happened. So you can see we did a lock in, we tagged it and then we pushed it. Um, on the failed job that didn't happen. It all stopped right here to evaluate when that evaluation failed. Um, so that just, just shows how powerful this can be. So I kind of glossed through all this stuff. Same, the failed one, we had our medium fixable vulnerabilities in the package. We had the root user running AWS credentials, port 22 was exposed and there was no health check, bad news. On the passing one, we upgraded our system, we added user node, we removed port 22 and we removed that, those AWS credentials from that image, which allow them to pass and get pushed to your repo. Um, so you, you can see with that example, there's really easy little things that are just really easy to slip by and let get out into your Docker file and that can create security vulnerabilities in your container image. Um, with the Anchor Engine Orb, it's just really easy to catch those and not even have to worry about it before it gets into production. Um, and the other thing that's great about the policy evaluation is that on the policy evaluation output screen, you can go and look at the detailed descriptions of the stop actions. And that makes it really easier for developers to see exactly what's wrong and be able to go fix that themselves without having to you know, get a hold of ops and ask them what's, what's happening? Like, why isn't this working? Or getting hold of security and saying, why did I fail? It's right there on the output of Circle CI, just like any other tests in your CI, right? Like a unit test fails, you go and you find what happened and how do I fix it? Uh, this provides that exact same kind of mechanism, but for security compliance on your containers. Um, so finally, that, that's kind of it for my demo. Um, I just wanted to reiterate that just go and add the Anchor Engine Orb to your Docker image build pipeline. There's, there's really no reason not to. It's free, um, it's open source, it's super simple to set up. Like, as you see, the most basic thing is eight lines of YAML. 
Um, and then you can customize it for your organization. So like Dan said, you can make a really simple policy that's checking for really basic things, or you can make a really comprehensive policy that is ensuring really strict security compliance on your images. Um, and I really believe that this just gives developers freedom to build Dockerize applications exactly how Docker ap applications were meant to be used and really harness the power of Docker um, and just let them build out their environments themselves and not have to worry so much about the security repercussions of doing that. Um, and finally, I just have some docs and resources for Anchor Engine. You can check out our company website to learn more about our enterprise product, our open source product. Um, our Anchor Engine product page is our project page is on GitHub. Um, you can go there and contribute if you would like to. It's open source. Or if you have any issues, um, that's a great place to check out. We also have all of our documentation. So if you wanted to read more about creating custom policy bundles, you can go to our documentation. And we have all sorts of great docs on that. Um, and then I have a link to the actual source code for the orb. So if you feel like you could make some contributions to this. Um, you can go ahead and make those contributions or put in any issues you need to on the Circle CI, CI Orb repo for Anchor Engine. Um, and then finally, we have our Anchor Community Slack channel, which is very active. Um, if you get on there and you have any questions about Orbs or about Anchor, um, I guarantee one of the developers, or me or Dan, one of us will get back to you within minutes, typically. Um, if not minutes, then hours we're really responsive on our community Slack. Um, and with that, that's everything I have. Um, so uh, Rose, if you wanna take over. Sure, thanks Brady. Um, so there were at least one question. I thought of a couple too, so I, we can get to those in a second. Um, and I also just wanted to, well, maybe we can talk about the questions and I'll just leave this list of links up here. This is kind of everything that you might need to get started with orbs um all of our documentation our main splash page uh blog posts all of our partners have been contributing blog posts about their orbs as well so you can check out i believe there's an anchor blog post up there as well um link to the registry link to our mono repo that has most of our orbs um and for other additional orb support um you can check out discuss.circleci.com we're pretty responsive on there um, and yeah, if you want to become a technology partner like Anchor, you can check out our technology partner link and uh, there's just like a simple Google form to fill out and um, we'll be in touch shortly. Um, so in terms of questions, there was one question from the, pan from the attendees about whether you can log into ECR um, yeah. or if it's only, okay, cool. So is it basically like any, any third party registry? that supports yeah. kind of the standard registry auth? Yeah, I can take that. Um, so the, the Anchor Engine, we've got uh, support for, for any Docker v2 registry, and, and that covers a lot of space by itself. And then some of the cloud kind of specific registries, ECR, Azure, uh, GCR, they, they've got a little bit of their own you know, authentication mechanisms, but Anchor Engine supports all of those as well. And there's a bunch of documentation on our site about exactly how to add those credentials. Um, but essentially what you can do is, you know, add the credential in the way that's appropriate for that specific registry uh, and the, the org will allow you to, to specify. And then um, that, that allows the anchor engine to, to pull in the, the images for, for scanning. Cool. Thank you. Um, so I just had some questions. So one was that we have a, you know, a test summary section at the top of every circle CI job that's mm -hmm. Uh, typically used to show the results of various, uh, usually like, you know, unit or integration tests, but um, also container type scanning and things like that. I was wondering if there's a way to output um, the results of Anchor scans as JUnit XML. Uh, so uh, in terms of formatting, uh, you know, right, right now, all of the, all of the, um, the output from Anchor Engine comes back as JSON. So, uh, is it, you know, I think Brady showed a way to kind of parse out that information a little bit with JQ. Um, you know, I, I think in general, the reports are, are pretty flat. I mean, a little bit of structure, but we try to make them pretty easy to consume. So I, I feel like a, a conversion utility is something that could, could be on the, 
uh, on the radar for, you know, pretty simply. The, the, the documents are also described um, formally through the API spec of Anchor Engine. So there's, there's a formal way to actually take it and, and maybe even generate an automatic converter. Right. I, uh, yeah, I think it would, wouldn't be too hard to convert the JSON to JUnit XML. And also it would be cool yeah. for us to support additional formats. Um, yeah, yeah sorry. Think, Brady, did you have something to add to? Oh, Brady, did you have uh, something to add as well? Yeah, I had my microphone muted. Um, <laughs> I like oh. talking, talking to no one. Um, at this point, I we don't support that like right out of the box with the orb, um, but I feel like it'd be pretty easy to implement. And uh, I think that's a great idea. And I'll probably add that to my list of things to do for the next orb release. Cool. Uh, it's something I'd like to do too, is just a, like a kind of all in one toolkit for converting various things to JUnit XML, um, yeah. because this comes up a lot. Yeah. Um, and I had one other question, which was just what do folks typically do with the results of these container scans? Do they send them to like third party, um, you know, like artifactory type services or, you know, having them live in circle is great, but there's probably better places for them to be as well after the fact. Yeah, that, that's a really good question. And, you know, to be honest, we see a lot of variance. I mean, one of the reasons we, we, um, we generally try to <laughs> generate the reports in, in a way that's, that's a bit raw is that various folks will, will take that and, and pull it into uh, you know, other systems. We've got some folks that pull it into a, an Elasticsearch system or an Elk stack. Um, and we've got other folks that will pull it into like a centralized security document store for reference, you know, timestamp it, throw it in there, and then it's part of a official audit trail. Um, and then we've got other folks that, that literally convert these things to PDF documents. Uh, and you know, uh, generate them, email them around, stuff like that. So we, we've kind of seen uh, a lot of different things happen. Some teams we, we actually talk to use the CI CD almost as a shell, right? Where it's just something that's happening, right? So they'll actually go there and that's the primary source of truth for all these reports. Cool, thank you. Um, well, unless there's any other questions from the audience, I think that about covered that on my end. It looks like uh, Brady might have run into a technical issue. Yeah. Um, but I just wanted to mention if folks have any questions about the orb, obviously you're welcome to reach out to the Anchor team, but you can also reach out to me at rose at circleci.com. Um, and yeah, thanks for joining. That's perfect. Thank you all very much for, uh, for taking the time to, to, to watch today. And thank you to CircleCI for hosting this. It, it's been a really good process to become partners and work with you with the, the org process. Very smooth. And uh, we love the technology. So thank you. Cool. Yeah, thank you.